They travel at 60 miles an hour, the fastest way to transport material to the front. But if you choke off the supply, you kill the enemy. Like this train here, you can see it's moving. Don Farmer, an F-4 Phantom pilot, discusses various strategies for attacking moving trains. You know, trains are uh, a dangerous thing to attack. I'm sure glad I'm not flying back in World War II because you have to get so close to a train to actually do any damage with the uh, 50 caliber weapons. You know, and when you get that close to a, a train like that that could have enemy troops on it or around it, you're well within lethal range. You never know when that golden BB is going to hit you. Trains were a high value target, but they were a risky target in more ways than one. They were well guarded, well defended. The trains are fairly difficult to hide, so if you had to go out and attack a train, it was fairly easy to see because you can get on a track and just follow it until you get to the train. By taking out a train, critical supplies needed by the German army are delayed or destroyed. The gun platform for these train attacks is the P-47 Thunderbolt. With a top speed of 428 miles per hour, it can easily outpace a train. In this clip, the P-47 pilot walks his bullets down the length of the train. Aiming for the engine was the number one priority. Take it out, stop the train. You see return fire from a train. It's likely to be a military convoy, and then you'll take out the rest of the cars. You'll do as much damage as you can once you're certain, as certain as you can be, that that's a, a fully military target. But you'll see a lot of strong secondaries, a lot of steam escaping, a lot of just complete rupturing of the combustion engines on the train. Checking that clip again in slow motion, you can see the moment when the bullets pierce the boiler. It may take several passes to cause enough damage to the engine to stop it. Until the smoke starts rising up straight, you probably have either a strong wind or a train in motion. Still, the pilot's attacking the engine. Probably has a sense that it's not dead entirely. You can see some return fire from the train. Here we have another sequence with a train moving down the track. Again, he's going to go for the engine. Stop the train. You stop the immediate target, and you create cholesterol in the arteries. You jam up the lines. You jam up the supply routes. You do damage that lasts beyond the damage you're doing to the train itself. What they try and do is, they, like this train here, you can see it's moving. They can get the train to, or the engine to explode and actually come off the track. It's really, the whole train is going to tear up a big portion of the track. So what that will do is it will slow down the movement of uh, enemy troops and uh, equipment. Strafing railroad cars was dangerous. The Germans were known to transport Allied prisoners in unmarked trains. Pilots look for various signs to indicate that their bullets are hitting the target. You can also see sometimes when the fire is starting to hit the train, there's a big, big release of steam. And a lot of times what the engineer is doing is he's trying to release that pressure from the actual engine itself or the water tank that has the steam in it so it would just pierce holes instead of explode. Strafing the length of the train can lead to a lucky shot, a car carrying munitions. In this scene, the pilot of a P-47 carefully maneuvers his mounted guns onto the target. In this footage over the rail yard, you're seeing how he's keeping his nose relatively on target, but swinging it left and right by just kicking the rudder pedals. So he stitches this sort of pattern we see here on the rail yard. In this next clip, a P-47 Thunderbolt attacks a railroad yard. A general strafing as he goes past inflicts significant damage on the rail traffic from this vital transportation hub. Yeah, a lot of return fire in this footage. These are well-guarded trains. Slow that clip down and check out the complete circle etched by the pilot using just his rudders. Let's back it up. Here it is again, at normal speed. A 
pass on the rail yard here. First airplane in, has got the best chance of getting out. Second airplane in, they're starting to, to target in on you, know where you're coming from, you know your speed. It's tough being tail end Charlie. These pilots make several passes. They don't give up till they see the locomotive explode. You know, with every war, what we see in gun camera footage helps train the next generation of pilots. You know, we take this footage back, we see what it's like to scrape at 20 degree dives, 30 degree diving angles, even have the damage assessment teams coming in to get a feel for, you know, what can we do against the train with this caliber weapon, with this type of attack, this type of approach. You know, this footage here, World War II, will affect how pilots will fly in Vietnam and, and probably in the Gulf War.